Hello guys and welcome in this new video on the ACS uh, Entity Component System uh, project and um, yeah, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about um, I started this video where I wanted to build an Entity Component System from scratch where I wanted to teach you how to do that and we have been writing the code all along so you can find the link to the previous video in the link in the description below so if you have any question about anything you can still write comments and things like that now this is where we left off last in the last video we just created our entity our entity don't worry about all these things that I ate here I'm gonna explain all of that in a couple of seconds so we've created our entity and we created a component called transform because we know all object all um, all kind of object that it get that get involved in the game has a transform component so as we created our entity we directly attach a transform to it that's all things that we've been talking about in the previous video and we are able to add component and you know play around with component check if and if an entity has a component and things like that now in this video we're gonna be adding more components as I promised from the previous video so this video is not so uh, um, it's not so directly focused on entity component system although it is because we also have many things around it in this video which which are important to actually make that possible to actually make that you know more usable because I just don't want to make something too basic which you actually not gonna be able to grasp the whole idea about that so that that's the reason why I'm gonna be adding some couple of stuff to actually make this more consistent help you to actually structure your code also somehow and things like that so um, yeah in this video we're gonna be creating component like um, sprite renderer we're gonna be creating a UI label we're gonna be creating collider we're gonna be creating rigid body I hope we have the time for that <laughs> at least so without spending uh, our time too much let's get started so the first thing I wanted to talk about uh, before we start creating all those components is we need it because a sprite renderer is actually going to be uh, rendering textures on the screen. So I somehow need a way to load textures and uh, you know manage them. That's why I decided to create the assets manager. So the assets manager will handle things like font textures. If you need in your game or game engine to play sounds, you will also add it. A list for sound where you can actually get access via the ID and play around with that so that's that's the basic idea of this assets manager class now you have the code right here you can see we we simply have we basically have four function right here we have one to get the texture as you can see it takes an ID because you can see we have two maps here one map for texture another one for font so whenever we load the texture we start it in this map and we can access that via all object or all entities anywhere in the code because this class is going to be a singleton class or a static class we make this static because as i said we want to be able to access this resource from everywhere in the project so that's why we create this instance right here and um, yeah the get font also simply take the font as i said we are actually going to be create a ui label and just because I didn't want to put our focus on this because the video this video is about entity component system I didn't want to write code about this because this is not what we're looking for I just edit this to actually make my job easy so I could make something really consistent and show you how this could be powerful when you create a huge project so and we simply make this class uh, static or singleton by using this get method right here which is always return this static instance that we create here and the implementation of all this method is uh, straightforward we have uh, our constructor we simply initialize ttf init this allows this make stl be able to load font and handle font things like that we can initialize images with format png and jpeg so we, we have both of these and if anything was wrong then we simply want to show the message we have the get texture the get texture simply go out and check if our texture map already has something like that if it has something like that that's why we count we count if id if this id actually exists if it's greater than zero then the texture like that exists 
we do this because we don't want to try to access a memory that don't exist you know that's why we make sure we check if the texture if our map actually has that then we return it or we return a null pointer to be able to load a texture we need to use uh, SDL image um, which we actually do here IMG load we we simply get the renderer for the from the engine I'm gonna be talking about that in a couple of seconds because to actually load a texture in SDL you need to um, have a renderer if you are not if you are just interested in the um, in the ECS part you can switch this part and simply see because you don't have to understand all of this to understand what I'm gonna be doing but if you are interested in getting this then you can keep watching but I recommend you to do that if you want to work with SDL so we just simply go out and check if the texture was properly load loaded then we put it in here and we give a message back that the texture was loaded if anything went wrong so we just give it out so this should be IMG get error so uh, the load font is the same principle we simply use the TDF open font and that's all we have to do about that and the get font we simply check if the font is there and we return it the clean function is nothing but looping through our textures and font fonts and then simply destroy each one using destroy SDL destroy texture and TTF close font so that's all we actually do with this asset manager so if you in the future want to add a new thing a new assets like sounds effect in your game or your game engine you can simply go out and add a new map right here with IDs and you'll be able to add some sound and add your load and get and that's how you can actually manage that now uh, I'm gonna be talking about this engine right here you can see renderer as I said to be able to load the texture you need a renderer but we want to have only one renderer because we have one window which has a renderer the renderer is nothing but the context in which we're gonna be drawing things because um, in the graphic in a computer graphic and things like that you always need to have a context in which you draw things and the context is nothing but like a virtual uh, a virtual screen I would say like that you can get it like that where you actually have to draw things that's why I have my engine class right here the engine class is like the core of the game or the game engine depending on what, how you call it and you can see I just start by defining the screen size and the screen height the color of the background just define a dark color like that I could have simply put this value it doesn't matter um yeah the engine has some important function like quit init clean render update it's also a static class or a singleton class it has a function which tells me if this engine is still running or if it's not and uh, i have this get renderer which i talked about in the assets manager because this renderer right here is one i want to access i could actually do it this way static and simply go up here put it public do it static and simply access it but i simply want to access it read only i don't want anyone anybody to change anything on that so i think that's whatever that's the way i do it okay let's switch over to the cpp file um yeah this is all not what i want this is all not what I want, so I'm gonna remove this. So we have our um, engine. We define our instance because it's a static class. You need to do that, or you will have some problem. And the initializer simply set running to false, Windows to null pointer, renderer null pointer. So and we simply have our init function, which will initialize SDL video, the video mode and if anything was wrong simply print the error message on the screen and we create a window right here we have some flag the window should be resizable it should be maximized it should auto hide uh, dpi because we have some screen to deal with optimization of colors and things like that so this actually allows that so we create a windows this is the title this is the position on the x and the y axis we have the size of the screen and we put the flags that we created above so we check if the windows was created properly if not we simply get a message back to see what was wrong we create now the renderer so to actually create a renderer you need a window and we want it to have graphic 
um, uh, we wanted to we wanted to use graphic card for rendering that's why we have this flag right here and we also want to synchronize this with the frame rate of the screen so that you know the movement is also you know fluent yeah I know I'm getting tired too so we set the clear color to dark and we set the running to true so I haven't talked that much about this here we have the window we have the renderer we have the background color which is the clear color and the instance so we have this manager which we're gonna be coming to that later and uh, assets manager we simply clean we destroy the renderer we destroy the window and we quit so these are all basic stuff SDL stuff so and here we set the renderer draw color we set the background color to our clear color we clean the screen and we call our manager draw here and this guy will simply check anything which is added to the renderer right here and draw it on the screen so that's basically what I had to add to this to actually be able to start creating the things that I had so now let's move and create our sprite renderer so I'm simply gonna be calling it sprite so I'm simply gonna say add class go up here and say class I'm just gonna call it sprite you could call it sprite renderer if you want to because I think unity call it call, call it like that sprite renderer but I don't want to write too much this yes and I'm gonna edit there make sure everything is correct here and create yes yes so let's write what is going to be here the first thing is to include is to pragma or is to pragma ones So we need to include some important things that are going to be used. So we need string and uh, need to include SDL and we also need to include entity because we need that. Also want to include um, component and we want to include the assets manager so this is basically what we need to actually make this possible now we have a default constructor just just like that and default destructor now we have some private parameters that are tied to this component for example in the width of the sprite we want to render it's important height also we simply set the values we have the rect so to actually render things in SDL you need a south rect and a destination rect the south rect is actually the part of the texture you want to render because it can happen sometime, sometime that you have a set of images or textures on a single file and you want to go and grab only a single part of that a specific part of that and draw it on the screen and you use a rectangle you know rectangle shape to actually get that part so that's why I have this source rect right here which I'm gonna be initializing with zero and I'm gonna duplicate that because I also have destination now the destination rectangle is going to be the rectangle you know on the screen where you actually going to be drawing this sprite and also initialize it with zero now you know this component actually um, need to have access on the transform of the object because if I attach a sprite a sprite to an entity then I also want the sprite to move while the entity is moving that's why I need to have a pointer to the transform of this we're gonna be getting that in a couple of seconds it's a null pointer so this is this we need a steady string a texture ID because you know we need to know which texture is going to be printed out and we need the SDL texture which is going to be a pointer and initialize with null pointer and uh, we also need to know the renderer target on which render because SDL actually offers you um, 
the, the ability to actually create multi windows and each windows has like a renderer and you could want to draw your sprite on another window or whatever you could have you could have different renderer on your screen where you want to draw things in a specific area and things like that that's why this class is also also need to have a target renderer you know and uh, we're gonna be putting that in the constructor to initialize and one um, another important um, component of the sprite is the orientation SDL offers that using the flip so you can simply say flip so we have vertical flip so when you flip an image vertically or horizontally this is the idea of that and I want it to be initialized with SDL flip none so so these are basically all the components we need for this class now we need to define a, construct, uh, a constructor with parameters so I'm simply gonna say sprite sprite I need SDL renderer so the target where is this going to be drawn so STD I need a string the texture ID which is going to be used for this which texture so I need to initialize the target I'll say air target and I initialize it here and I also want to initialize the texture ID texture ID I'll simply let me kind of change this name to make sure I don't have any problem texture ID so this is how I can initialize that now I need the init function you see now we really need the init function I'll simply say a bool init oh I forgot one important thing this is a you know a component I need to make sure I inherit from component so you make sure you do that because if you don't do that then this init function doesn't make any sense final So, how do we have to initialize? The, fir the first thing we need to do is to get the transform of this entity. If you remember, if you remember, let me go to component. Component has entity and whenever we create, whenever we add a component to an entity, we actually set that component entity as the current entity to which we are adding the component. I know it's a little bit weird and controversial, but I know you get what I mean. So now we can actually access that entity you see and say okay get component we want to get the transform because we need that we are pretty sure that this entity has a transform since we force all entity to have a transform when they get created so we don't have to check if it has a, a transform we could have done that in, in in some cases like um in a rigid body for example you can check if it has a collider if you want to make sure you want to make collision and things like that so but in this case we don't need that so we have the transform we can use this transform to actually update the position of the sprite when our entity moves and make sure you put the reference here because transform is a pointer but this guy returned a reference so that's uh, basically it so we say texture now we need to load the texture is equal to assets manager um, um and we say get no we say get we say load texture and we simply go out and give the texture id that we we've initialized so that's how we can load our texture now we should normally check if the texture was loaded if not then we give a message back i don't want to spend that much time on that now i can define the destination rect of my desk rec x is equal to transform you see transform position dot x duplicate this and say y y but we also have we also have the width and the height so i'm gonna put here we have scale dot x so we we'll say width 
multiply by the scale you know you remember the transform represent this also holds the scale of of the component and we need to make sure the width is also scaled according to the scale of the transform that's why we needed to actually have access on that transform so you can see this is width and this is height now but as you know width and height are now uh, not initialized so we need to actually initialize those since we have the texture one thing we can do is simply go out and get the size of the texture because SDL actually offers a function to do that query texture with query texture you can actually retrieve the size of the texture so since we've loaded our texture up here we can simply retrieve that size right here and these parameters are null pointer null pointer and we want to go out and give the reference to our to our width what is this null pointer and we give the reference to our height and now this is how we can get the size of the texture and we could use that to set the position of the, the destination and the same thing is to be done for the south so we simply say south right x it's normally zero because we want to hold the, we want to uh, actually copy the, the whole image see when you put the south to zero that mean if i have an image like this uh, dark screen right here if I put zero the source is gonna be zero on the X and zero on the white and that that means we start here and we are going to to, uh, to grab the whole surface of the image so so gonna put Y zero and now the width and the height are normally gonna be the width and the height that we that we've loaded you see and now we grab the whole sprite and we can set the destination also and things like that so this is our init function we also need to override the draw function i was simply going to say void draw override and final because this no one is going to be inheriting from this again so now sdl actually give us the render copy function to draw things on the screen you can see sdl we give the target we give the texture the source rect and the destination rect this is the um, the center of the rotation we could add that also if you want to rotate your your sprite you can put a sdl point here to define at which point your sprite is going to be rotating so yeah i think i have everything there no this was this was wait a minute need to find it out where am i ah, okay this is the angle of the rotation here we can go out and say transform and we say rotation you see we put the rotation the angle of the rotation there and is there anything else and yeah here is the point the center so this is the angle of the rotation and you can define at which point your your sprite should rotate if you put null pointer it's going to be rot rotating from the center of that sprite so that's why i don't want to mess around with that i could have added that here add another sdl point here and say okay but it doesn't matter so um uh, yeah i think we have this now we need an update function void update override and final now we always want to make sure we update the position of the destination right so i'm gonna say dest right that x it's gonna be equal to static static cast because rectangle takes integer you want to make sure it always get integers that's why i'm making a static cast i'll say transform position that x you remember our transform position is a float and this guy here takes integers so you want to make sure you but if you don't do it it will still work so that's not just to make sure if you want to make something consistent which will not probably crash at any point of time you might want to go out and hit that so about the size um, uh, now the size we are actually going to be doing the same thing with so you can simply go out and copy this copy this up here and paste it in here 
do the same thing for the height paste it in here you make sure you change the value here so we have our sprite component in place so let's go out and try to use this and see if it's working properly now uh, in our main function right here I want to add um, I want to add a game loop to actually be able to you know re-render my sprite on the screen because if we don't have something like that then SDL will clear the screen and we will lose everything that's why I'm simply going to be removing this we don't need this anymore and I'm gonna include I'm gonna include let me remove this also I'm gonna include engine come on man what's wrong engine is not it's not found okay yeah I don't know why ah uh, I probably do no I don't hmm engine it's not finding it give me a second to check what is wrong here now I can see the problem I've been talking engine engine all the time but I didn't call my file the right the right way so need to call this engine so make sure I change that that was a pretty bad error that I did there so I want to remove this and see engine great now if I go back here and try to compile this then works without problem manager that's normal so I'm just gonna go out and say auto um, and I'm gonna say engine um, equal engine get okay. just want to get it like that and I'll say engine um, uh, in it so want to initialize it initialize my engine give me a second to actually check this yeah so I will say while engine is running so as long as this engine is going to be running um, we need to now there is one thing I need to add here but before that we simply go out and say you know what I'm simply gonna give the name here because I'm tired of this thing find the engine in French so I'll say engine dot mm, engine dot update engine dot draw or uh, render instead rather so now SDL actually has a problem when you start a windows without having at least the quit event the program will simply hang so you need to have at least a quit event so that's why I want to create another method right here, which I'm going to call void event. And I need to go to the CPP file and implement that. So I could do it down here. Simply say insert event. And I'm simply going to say SDL event. And I'm going to say event and I'm gonna say why SDL pull event so I want to pull all the event that happen and simply handle each one of them and in here I'll simply say okay um, switch event type so and I'm simply want to say case SDL quit and in this case you simply want to say um, is running no you want to say running is equal to false to actually break the loop and you say break so this is normally it I need to add the reference because this guy checked the reference in that so 
that's why I need to go up here and say engine events so that's normally it this should create a window normally if everything works just fine the update function I forgot this guy up here so let me go out and check return status one what is wrong here let me check um, the engine.cpp do we have something here so we say init have we initialized yet I don't know why I have so much file open right here sorry let me close entity manager and things like that sprite really no good ECS yeah entity yes uh, the main file um yeah so do we have the init we have init and init it's not taking any parameter this should this is all normal why is it saying return let me compile this again so let me check this yeah i had some small issues here i didn't say get i said load instead so all this make everything worse and uh, i still had the problem with my files which wasn't included properly so properties and but i i am pretty sure we don't have this problem i didn't kind of put the file to be compiled and linked so that's why it was somehow crashing but now it's um, working normally but i still got one left oh yeah so um it wasn't a big deal now uh, if i compile this then uh, we simply have our window which appears right here normally and if i close you can see our asset scale <coughs> now we actually want to be able to create entities and add sprite for it and draw that on the screen and see it and everything is working just fine so um i just want to go here and say something like i want to include the manager so I could say include entity manager. I could have simply used um, a, a simple uh, fake class name there, but okay. So I'll say entity manager and I'll say manager so i can go here and uh, initialize it in my init function where am i engine.cpp i can simply go here before setting all of these and say manager it's equal to new entity manager so we can now simply go out and add some entities so i could say um auto entity we can say manager add entity now I don't do it this way because my function is not working like that actually I need to create an entity first entity and I'll say equal to new entity And I can edit here. So let's try to compile this, make sure everything's working so far. Okay, we have it. Close this, close it. In. So now let it um, component to it as our sprite component. We say entity. So I don't have to actually add component before I add it to the manager. I could do that afterwards. That's not a problem because I still have the reference to that entity so just to make sure you guys don't get confused with that sprite the sprite takes two components the first one is the renderer and the second one is the texture ID so I'm just gonna put test here now this is where we need to uh, we need to use our assets manager so I'm gonna say assets manager get get and I want to say load load texture 
So I want to give the ID test and the path. I need to. I'll have something like assets test dot png. Now I normally need to go out and create this folder and add the file in it so so that we can actually make this possible. So I go to my folder right here and I'm going to create a new folder and call it assets. I need to find an image so give me a second for that. So go right here, go to my desktop. Um, yeah, this is uh, assets. So I can go out and paste this image right here. It's only simple to sprite, so you can see this one test. So and I pass the path here, and I say okay, just load this image. And um, I just add this component and say, okay, the texture of this sprite is going to be. Now, the only thing I have to do is to go down here and say, manager draw. And he will take care of doing that for us. And I can say, manager update. And this should normally print the result on the screen when everything is correct. So nothing is coming out. Um, why? texture loaded so why isn't it coming out now uh, let us set the value of the of the of the entity the position of the transform we say get component and I'll say transform and I'll simply gonna say position it's equal to vec I'll put it to 100 100 so let's try it again and see why it's not working okay still not let me go to the sprite and check the draw function we have sdl we have the texture uh, we have the source and the destination everything looks great um one thing i need to make sure it's correct is the um, i check the transform the scale is it initialized with one yeah, one. Yeah, and um, here we didn't use it, so everything looks great. Go back to the sprite. Um, yeah, everything looks great here with transform scale. Why transform scale? So let me kind of put something here. I need to print out some text. To make sure this guy is being called include iOS stream to make sure this guy is being called see out updating sprite so we need to copy this and put this also up here and I'll say growing sprite so let us check this uh, it's doing the job but nothing is shown on the screen so let us see why first we need to check if the texture here is not the empty pointer so let us say if texture equal null pointer then you probably want to say something. Say we say null pointer sprite. So remove this and make this. You see our pointer, our our texture is normally loaded because our loader also said it, it was loaded. So go back to the engine.cpp. The problem, the renderer is in the new pointer. We add the sprite. Hmm. I need to find out what is wrong right here. So actually, um, it turns out my scale right here is always zero. So I'm getting uh, my the width of my destination is always zero. That's why it's not working. 
So if I just remove this here and I compile, you see the object just appears. But if I put that back, the object will not show. So now it has to do with the transform, but I, I'm not seeing what is wrong right now. But for now, I just want to keep it like that and move forward. Maybe I have a problem with the initialization because when I add a new entity, then I add this component transform. And I don't know uh, why um, the scale is getting the value zero. Although I, uh, even though I have one here set or even here, and all these functions are working properly, or in this case where I set the value, I mean, this is all crazy. I don't know why, but that's not important. I don't want to uh, spend too much time on that. So the, the problem is you can simply go out and re remove the scale right here. And you probably don't have this problem. I don't know. I still need to check why I have that. So, and uh, yeah, and you can see we add our sprite component. And if I just compile it, then you see we have, I could read another, another sprite so simply say moon and just compile it and i have my moon just loaded like that so and as and you can see right now it's pretty much easy because if i want to create a specific object then i don't have to define a class define the properties of that class and maybe make it inherit from another class this will be too much and that will be a, a lot of work for me i can simply define an entity just attach some component to it and I'm ready to go. This is really storage saving because when we have an in, in, inheritance, for example, when we have like um, like um, uh, a static object, like a tree inheriting from get ob object, which has some properties like um, origin or maybe, uh, you know, transform and things, we don't actually use all of those properties and that's actually a bad thing because the memory is still going to be used or even though we don't use those properties but in this case we only add something that is necessary to our entity to have so if my entity needs a sprite then i can simply attach it to it this is somehow a way to create classes but program in in, in during the runtime not like you define your your classes during the development time and then they are used during the runtime. In this case, we simply create class, classes during the runtime and each class is created based on what he has to do, not just because he inherited from something and he has a lot of function which is not used and things like that. So that's something I really like about um, Entity Component System. Now, um, we also want to add another component. So let's say we add a rigid body component to our, to our um, entity right here so just go out and say class and you say rigid body so you want to make sure you put it in the ECS folder you remove the CPP file only leave the header file because I don't want to implement that much on that so rigid body so I'm gonna include first of all the pragma now we need to include entity because we need that. We also need to include vector. As you can see, I've moved my vector file in the ECS. It has nothing to do there, but I just wanted to put it there. So, um, but you can leave it wherever you have put it. So that's not a point. Include component, and I will say public. Oh, nope, not there. Public component so we have like a default constructor and um, yeah the destructor it's just yeah just gonna be a default thing we don't actually need to implement anything about this now we need some other com uh, constructor we need to overload our constructor with something like uh, the gravity scale so because up here we want to define a, 
constant a constant expression uh, expression which is going to be float gravity so it's going to be 10 now the gravity scale is going to define how so this is just a multiplier which is going to define how this entity is going to be affected by the gravity so that's why i need a scalar for the gravity to actually tell me how um, my gravity actually has to look like so um, and I could simply go out and define the parameter down here I'll say float gravity scale which should normally be defined to 1 but I also need some uh, some component a rigid body I'm gonna be initializing it here so gravity scale put it like that it's, it's this one here come on man so we have that um, I want to define some um, some important parameter to my rigid body like for example the drag so the drag is simply a force which resists to the object so when an object is trying to move forward for example we can have the drag with the ground or the drag with air friction which you know prevent the object from moving forward and it's a vector because it's a force with magnitude and things like that and we have um, also we have the force the linear force when uh, when the car for example is tr is running when a car is moving he use the forces which come from the motor to actually move forward and it's an external force so we have this vector it's a inertial force i mean you can see it's also vect this now a rigid body actually need a velocity so so it also need to have access on the transform if you remember we still need to know where our object is going to be so that's normally what we basically need since the transform already have the position in it so we don't need to define the position in the rigid body we could also add the acceleration and uh, I'm just gonna show you in a couple of seconds how we can add that but I just want to make a simple linear uh, falling you know a moving object so that's why I don't bother to add acceleration so in it the only thing we have to do in the init is to simply get the transform so we say entity get component we say transform So that's the only thing we have to do in this. We need void. I really don't want to mess up with this. Override and final. You want to add um, the. We don't need a draw function. That's clear. But we need the update instead. Override and uh, final and. Uh, we can simply say velocity of x is equal to force x minus drag x and uh, in the y-axis velocity let me go ahead because the gravity only affects the y-axis so velocity y it's equal to force come on man force on the y-axis plus the drag plus the gravity scale multiplied by gravity now basically what we're doing here is all our rigid body ha uh, have a mass of one so i didn't add a component called mass i could simply do it here say mass dot mass okay 
and then I will simply go out and multiply this by the mass this would be the same thing but I just go out and say okay all my component have have like a unit mass so I don't need to add that but it depends on what you want to do uh, in your project so you can go out and add that if you want to so as I said we could add the acceleration right here if you know the acceleration is nothing but um, um, we simply take this velocity I mean the acceleration is uh, the gravity multiplied by the k square I don't remember so it doesn't matter you could add the acceleration if you want you just have to check on Google um, the rigid body and uh, how the acceleration is calculated and you could add that on that but this this will simply give us a linear uh, movement so that's enough for me and I can simply go out and say transform translate and I can put the velocity there so don't worry about the trend the translate the transit is simply a function which takes a vector as parameter and will simply move the y and the x position so if you don't have the vector class you will simply go ahead and say position of x x equal v of x so just like this you will do it like that but in my case i i don't i already implemented this operator for the vector so i can simply do that i could add a cons right here so we do not change that so go back to rigid body so i think that's basically it we could add a function where we simply say void set force set force and we go out and say const vect and we simply say force is equal to so that's basically it you can add some getters and setters and all that kind of stuff if you want to I don't care about that because that that's not a purpose so I can simply go and add this to my object and you will see the object will simply start falling so just go here and say uh, normally if we have no error message or something like that rigid body now I can add the um, the the, the gravity scale for now I'm gonna put uh, 0 0.2 so you can fell slowly we can see the slow motion but one thing you don't have to forget is to include rigid body up here so let me compile if we have no error message because we do have one because we need something ah this is crazy compile again transform and translate what is the big deal let me check the error message operator plus plot what does this mean operator plus plot here or here or here this is normal right ah here we are ah okay drag that y forgot this <laughs> yeah it's all normal now so I can compile this okay you see you see how the moon is just falling this is because of gravity now I want my test back and if I just remove this the scale will be one and he will fall a little faster you know whoa 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 whoa, whoa just failed I think I know why rigid body let me go back there scale is one because of this I'm not sure why default doesn't work I don't know why these things hit me oh no that's not what I wanted So let me go and maybe try to edit here for this guy. Copy this. Trying to see. And you see, it's just falling. So it was the initialization of this thing. I need to figure out all these things with constructor overload and things like that. So as you can see we have it, we have it done. 
and I can even go let me go here and set the false so let me go and say entity get component rigid body now say yeah rigid body I'll say set false and I can go out and say vect let's say we want it to move on the um, x-axis so I'll simply go out and put like 5 on the x-axis and 0 on the y-axis what is wrong what do they say class rigid body has no member set force let me go and see rigid body set force yeah should be with slow as small as so we have it and you can see it's moving on the x-axis let me reduce the gravity scale so that you can actually see that going on so where we so i'm simply gonna say 0 0.2 and if i run this you see it will simply move forward and downward because of gravity and this is basically how you can create a project type so when you create a gun for a player with a gun for example you can create an entity like this which is a projectile you simply set the force like this if i say like 15 here you see he'll just fly away from the screen that's not that fast but you get what i mean by that so and that's basically the idea so um i think we're gonna be stopping uh, in this video right now this is a long video and um, i think that's enough we're going to be creating some other component in another video and if you guys have any question or concern you can write me in the comment section below um yeah you can get the source code from my patreon page and um, maybe you you kind of have um, a better way of doing things you can simply write me down there and i'll also learn from your experience so have a nice day and ciao